Hi everyone! Today we're going to talk about how to use quotient rule to find the derivative of a function. To complete this problem, we'll understand our quotient rule formula and then use it to calculate the derivative. Let's take a look. In this particular problem, we've been asked to find the derivative of f of x equals x divided by the quantity x plus c over x. We're going to be denoting the derivative as f prime of x, this notation right here, which indicates the first derivative of our function f of x. Now the first thing we need to notice about our function is that it's a rational function. It's the quotient of two polynomials, and because it's a quotient, because it's a fraction, we're going to need to use the quotient rule in order to take its derivative. That means that the first thing we need to do is understand our quotient rule formula. So I've gone ahead and written the quotient rule formula here, and it tells us that if we want to take the derivative, d over dx means take the derivative of what follows this notation. So if we want to take the derivative of a fraction where we have g of x, a function in the numerator, and h of x, another, another function in the denominator, so we have a fraction with a numerator and a denominator, if we want to take the derivative of that fraction, here's the formula we're going to need to take the derivative. And you'll notice that we have g prime of x, which is the derivative of the numerator. The numerator is g of x. g prime of x is its derivative. We have h of x here, our denominator, our original denominator, minus g of x, which is our original numerator, times h prime of x, which is the derivative of our denominator. So it should be starting to come together that we're going to need both the original, we're going to need to identify both the original numerator and denominator, as well as the derivative of both of them, so that we can plug those pieces into our formula. So let's go ahead and start applying this formula to take the derivative of f of x and see what it looks like. Before we do that, though, let's take a second look at our function, uh, our, our function f of x. We have x divided by the quantity x plus c over x. Instead of trying to deal with a fraction here, c divided by x, within a larger fraction, which would start to get complicated, let's go ahead and change this c divided by x into a power function instead of a, a fraction like this. The way that we'll do that, essentially what this is here, and c is a constant in this case, so instead of x over x plus c over x to the first power, basically of x to the first power in the denominator of this little fraction right here, we can move that x to the first power up into the numerator with c just by changing the sign on the exponent from positive 1 to negative 1. So what this becomes then is x divided by x plus c times x to the negative 1. So c x to the negative 1 is the same thing as c divided by x to the positive 1. So let's go ahead and pretend that this last function here, x divided by x plus c x to the negative 1, is our function f of x that we're dealing with. It's exactly equivalent to what we started with. We haven't changed it at all. We've just kind of reworked the way that it's written to make it easier for us to use power rule in combination with quotient rule to find the derivative. We'll say that the derivative of our original function f of x is called f prime of x, written this way. And notice that our formula tells us that the first thing we need is the derivative of g of x. So we have g prime of x here, which means the derivative of g of x, and we know that g of x is our numerator. So we need to find the derivative of our numerator. Well, our numerator is x, and we know that the derivative of x is just 1. So we'll go ahead and put 1 here. And we'll separate everything with parentheses so it's really easy to us, for us to identify exactly where we are. So that was g prime of x. We've got that part. Now we need to multiply that by h of x, which we know here is our denominator. We don't have to do anything to it. We just have to multiply by our denominator. So our denominator is x plus c x to the negative 1. And we didn't change our denominator at all. Now, according to our formula here, we need to subtract, so we'll subtract, and then plug in g of x, which is our original numerator. We have the original numerator here, g of x, and we know that that's x. So we go ahead and plug in our original numerator, and then multiply that by the derivative of the denominator, because the denominator is h of x, and we're looking here for h prime of x, which is, 
which, which is its derivative. So we need to take the derivative of x plus cx to the negative 1. Well, let's go ahead and take that term by term. We know that the derivative of x is just 1, so we have 1 here. And now we can use power rule to find the derivative of cx to the negative 1. Remember that power rule tells us that we can just bring our exponent here out in front. We multiply the exponent by the coefficient. So we'll take negative 1 and we'll multiply it by our coefficient c. Negative 1 times c is just a negative c, so we'll get minus c. Our base x stays right where it is, and now we subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 1 minus 1 is a negative 2, and that's how we use power rule to find the derivative of that power function. That's the derivative of our denominator. Now we want to, according to our quotient rule formula, put in the denominator of our derivative the denominator of our original function squared. That's what this is telling us here. We take our original denominator, h of x, and we square it. So our original denominator is x plus cx to the negative 1, and we're going to square that. And now we've plugged in each piece of our quotient rule formula. We've finished evaluating and, and plugging in all of these pieces. So finding the derivative at this point is just a matter of simplifying as much as we can. So we'll go ahead and say that f prime of x is equal to, obviously the 1 here is redundant, so in the numerator we're just left with x plus, and at this point we'll go ahead and change these negative exponents back to positive exponents by moving these back to the bottom. So cx to the negative 1 is the same thing as c over x to the first power. So we change that back into a fraction. Then here, we're going to distribute this x across the 1 minus cx to the negative 2. So x times 1 gives us an x. Don't forget to account for this negative sign here. So x times 1 gives us an x. Then we have x times negative cx to the negative 2. Because we have the negative sign here and here, they're going to cancel, and we're going to end up with a positive. We have x and c in our numerator, so we have cx in the numerator, and this x to the negative 2 will move to our denominator and become an x to the positive 2. So we have x squared there. Then in our denominator here, we'll end up with x plus c over x squared. If we continue to simplify in our numerator, what we see is that we'll get an x to cancel from the numerator and denominator of this little fraction right here. So instead of cx divided by x squared, the x in the numerator goes away and we're just left with x in the denominator. So this will become c over x. And now we can add that to the c over x that we have here. We'll also notice that we have x minus x. So those two will cancel completely. And we'll just be left with, in our numerator here, 2c over x, all divided by the quantity x plus c over x squared. At this point, we could leave the function as it is, but we'll probably be able to pick up some simplification if we go ahead and expand the denominator. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll leave the 2c over x in our numerator, and we'll multiply this out. So x plus c over x times x plus c over x, and we'll just go ahead and expand this. When we do that, we'll say f prime of x our derivative is equal to 2c over x all divided by x times x, those first two terms gives us an x squared, x times c over x, the x's will cancel and we'll just be left with a c, so when we multiply these two together here, the x in the numerator cancels with the x in the denominator and we're just left with a c, so we say plus c. We get the same thing when we multiply these two together, we get the x's to cancel and we're just left with a c. And then we have c over x times c over x, which gives us a c squared over x squared. So what we're left with here is 2c over x all divided by x squared plus 2c plus c squared over x squared. If we find a common denominator within our denominator, right? So if we say, if we say keep the numerator as it is 2c over x 
but in our denominator, if we want to find a common denominator of x squared, we would have to multiply this first term, x squared, times x squared over x squared, essentially multiplying it by 1, and we would get x to the fourth over x squared. We would have to multiply 2c times x squared over x squared, again, multiplying it by 1, but allowing us to find a common denominator. So we would get plus 2c x squared over x squared. And then, of course, we have plus c squared over x squared. So now really, oops, x squared. So now we have that common denominator of x squared, and we could really just combine this whole fraction here like this in our denominator, and we just have x squared on the bottom. So when we simplify this, we instead of dividing a fraction, 2c divided by x, times another fraction, x to the fourth plus 2cx squared plus c squared over x squared, we can take this fraction here and multiply it by the inverse of the fraction we're dividing by. So we simplify, we keep the numerator as it is, 2c over x, but we Instead of dividing, we multiply and we take the inverse of the denominator. So this x squared in the denominator becomes an x squared in the numerator. And the x to the fourth, etc., comes down here into the denominator, 2c x squared plus c squared. Now, as you can see, we're going to get an x here to cancel from the denominator and one of the x's to cancel from the numerator. And we'll just be left with, in the numerator, 2cx all divided by what we had here in the denominator, which we could keep as it is, but essentially if we factor that, we'll get x squared plus c all squared. If we factor this here, we'll get that in the denominator. And this is really our simplified answer, f prime of x. So that's how we use the quotient rule to find the derivative of our function f of x to get f prime of x. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.